In this video, we're gonna look at a kind of standard procedure to use when you're trying to use the Rolly Seaboard with pretty much any synthesizer. And our goal is to establish kind of a, a checklist of things to go through. And my advice is really to bring in expression and polyphony kind of based on the needs of your song, right? Just enough. And so we'll start in the Rolly dashboard and we'll place the Seaboard into single channel mode. So it's gonna function a lot like a typical MIDI controller. We'll go to single channel mode. I'm making sure it's sending on channel one. And then I'm gonna set my pitch bend range. Now really with pitch bend range, we have to be a little bit careful. And the trick is gonna be to set it the same in the Rolly dashboard as it is in your synthesizer. And I'll switch it over to 24 now, because commonly in a lot of synthesizers, you can set a 24 semitone pitch bend range, but we'll have to check in our synth and make sure that we can set it that way. In this example, I'll be using Native Instruments Massive Synthesizer, uh, but this procedure is pretty much the same in any synth. So let's go over to Massive. Now, I'm gonna start from a kind of initialized patch. I'll go to File and New Sound. Now, I'm only doing this because I want to be really obvious kind of what I'm doing. My advice for you would be to pick a preset that's perfect for your song and then add in the expression to it. And you'll be able to do this after we kind of go through this procedure, but that's normally what I would do. But I like the idea of starting from a really clean and knit patch once so you can know what you're doing and you can really hear it very clearly. The first thing I'm gonna do is adjust polyphony for my sound. You know, I'm always thinking about this. How many notes do I wanna play at once? And I'm making a bass sound. And so for bass, I really want it to be a monophonic patch, which means we only get one voice at a time. That's gonna ensure that we don't get kind of overlapping notes and ugly low end dissonance. And this will usually be in some kind of global or voicing section of your synthesizer. And here in Native Instruments Massive, it's in the voicing tab and we'll set it to be a monophonic preset. In some synthesizers, you'll just set the polyphony down to one, and other synthesizers will be a mono button for monophonic. And this one, we have this option for mono rotate, which is great. And then we'll also put it in Legato Triller here in Massive, which controls what happens when you do have overlapping notes. Very often, you'll find that when you do have overlapping notes, the synthesizer itself will glide between them. But for me, I like to do that manually. That's why we got the Seaboard, right? So. I'll go over to my oscillator tab and turn the glide time very low. So it'll jump quickly between notes, but since we have this awesome device, we can glide with our hand manually. Let's try it. So that's the synthesizer jumping by itself. Now I, wanna, I do wanna play with glide, I just need to make sure that the pitch bend ranges are correct. So let's go back over to Massive and we'll look, we have this pitch bend option right here. And we have an option for a pitch bend up and a pitch bend down. Now, I'm gonna set this to kind of its maximum, and it goes to 24 up and 24 down. And that means we do have a 24 semitone pitch bend range. Now, the actual range is 48, right? But we call it 24 because it goes up from that note, up 24, and it also goes down 24. And we did set that earlier in the Rolly dashboard, so it should track right along with our keyboard. Let's try it out. So I'll play on a key wave, I'll play an E right now, and then I'll glide down an octave. And I'll play that pitch again. Same pitch, so we know that our pitch bend range is set appropriately. And already, that's a pretty cool patch. Now, the next thing I'd like to work on is getting the press dimension really to work well. And to do this, we'll have to assign modulation. And assigning modulation is one of the most common things you'll have to do and kind of have to figure out from, some, from synthesizer to synthesizer. And you'll always have to assign kind of four things or define four things, a modulation source, a modulation destination, a modulation amount, and a modulation direction. And we do this in a pretty common way here in Massive with a drag and drop procedure. We do have this AT modulation source. Now, the press dimension of touch gets transmitted as MIDI aftertouch, otherwise known as channel pressure. And so we want to assign aftertouch to control something. I can define the modulation source by clicking on this aftertouch modulation source. I can drag and drop that on a modulation destination for amplitude. And right away, the press dimension will work perfectly. I just have to make sure that my touch fader is all the way up. Pretty cool patch already. I'm loving it. And now we have glide working perfectly and press. I'm only concerned about slide now. Now we're gonna use another way to assign modulation. And this is a MIDI learn function. 
And with the MIDI learn function, the synthesizer will kind of wait for the next bit of data and then associate that with a specific parameter within your synthesizer. Because it's waiting for some data, I find with MIDI learn functions, it's good to reduce what the Seaboard is sending just so the MIDI learn knows exactly what you want to associate. And so I'm going to turn down the glide and press touch faders all the way so we're only sending slide data which actually goes in as MIDI uh, control change 74. Now slide is a great timbre control. Often we think of glide as being our pitch change, we think of pressure as being amplitude, and slide as being some kind of timbre control. It doesn't have to be, but those are great starting points. And I want to be able to assign um, a modulation amount and direction. And often with the MIDI Learn, it's going to go over the entire range of the parameter. So I'm going to use a macro control. I'm going to define macro control 2 to control filter cutoff, just like we did with Aftertouch. Now, in Massive, we don't have a filter in there yet, so I'll have to add in a low-pass filter. I'll use a four-pole filter. And let's try assigning our modulation direction. I click on that 2 that we just added, click and drag up to assign an amount for the modulation. So before we assign slide, let me just play a note and move our macro control. It sounds good, but it has like this high resonance. It's kind of really obviously uh, the filter. And so I'm going to turn resonance all the way down and try that macro control again. That's a nice range. I think that'll work really well for a bass sound. And now for MIDI Learn, I'll right click on the parameter and there's an option for MIDI Learn, which I'll choose. And then I'll just slide up on any key wave. We have a nice range of modulation there. And now I can start performing.